Happy Friday, everybody. Another gorgeous morning here in Arizona. Uh, we had three procedures yesterday. We got one procedure today. We're gonna try, try, ha, try switching this up a little bit. Friday's at our pee, and we're gonna go really more in depth into uh, one of our procedures yesterday, which was a uh, case of chronic neck pain and migraines. And so we're gonna use this opportunity to go really deep on that episode today. So stick around, stay tuned, and I hope you have a good one. All right, everybody, we just finished up our procedure day here. Uh, Friday's at RP. We are at Regenerative Performance, Gilbert, Arizona. We had one procedure today and we had three procedures yesterday. As I talked about in the little intro, I'm gonna briefly talk about three of the four procedures, but I'm gonna go really more in depth on one of the procedures, one of the procedures that we had yesterday. Try and give you more value and more depth on one and let's see how that uh, that starts working for you guys. So uh, three procedures that we had yesterday, all of them were PRP. Our first First case was a patient who had trigeminal neuralgia from a dental procedure that has resulted in some chronic pain. From there, there have been some progressions. She has had lots of different nerve blocks. She's even had an adipose stem cell procedure and a few different ganglion blocks. And she has seen some improvement, but not a lot. And so what we did there was we mainly focused on treating the peripheral cutaneous nerves from facial nerve and also from the trigeminal nerve, so mental nerve infraorbital in order to try and help in ways that she hasn't had help yet. So that was first case. Second case was a cervical PRP injection. So we treated the AO joint, AA joint for the atlanto-occipital, atlanto-axial, the facet joints. And then we did some greater and lesser nerve hydrodissection for a patient that we've been working with for a while who has had chronic headaches uh, and migraines and then some neck pain. So work on that. We're gonna skip third procedure because we're gonna go back to it. So today's procedure is a patient who has been having chest pain for quite some time that has been worked up by so many cardiologists, it's not even funny, and nothing ever comes back on their testing, uh, EKG, uh, echo, uh, stress testing, nothing. All comes back clean. So he has not seen relief in this chest pain that seems to be exertional, even with using nitro and things like that. So palpation-wise, supraclavicular nerves, very tender palpation, inflamed, and we decided to hydrodissect those. So we used PRP, we hydrodissected those in order to see if we can help improve the tissue integrity of the nerve, the health of the nerve, so that way, it is no longer painful. He's not getting chest pain, so we'll keep you updated on that. All right, going back to yesterday, Thursday. So we had a patient who came to us who had chronic headaches since about early 2000, chronic neck pain since about the mid 2010s. He has had a lot of different treatments over the years and it has helped quite some bit. He has had acupuncture, he's had gua sha, he has done supplements, he's on medications, he's had uh, regenerative injection therapies, he's had prolotherapy and PRP, he's had a lot of things but never fully uh, resolved his headaches. One of the big things with, with his is that all of his injections so far have been really focused on the facet joints and they've all been palpation guided. And if we look at the anatomy of the facet joints, we see that the SAP and the IAP are set up in such a way that they're angled. And when we come down and drop a needle onto the articular pillar with our palpation guided approaches, almost always it is never actually going inside the facet joint, it is just going into the perifacet region along the lamina, the IAP and the SAP. So because of this, because he still had some orthopedic testing, showing that his facets were causing some pain, we obviously did an ultrasound guided approach and injected into the facet joints. Now, one of the other areas that has never been treated on him and we suspect, and even after the procedure, 
major uh, kind of a little more uh, confirmatory in our diagnosis is that he's never had the upper cervical facet joint. So the atlanto-occipital and the atlanto-axial joint. Neither of those have been injected before because those are extremely dangerous procedures to do without image guidance. And so in the past, he's never had that done because it's always been palpation guided. And so under ultrasound guidance, uh, we injected those joints. One of the other reasons we did that was because of his headache pain pattern, where some a lot of his headaches were kind of sitting out here, front of the eye, behind the eye, a little bit of the temple, which is a common area that we can see pain radiation from the upper cervicals, C0, C1, or your atlanto-occipital joint, C1, uh, C2, which is gonna be our atlanto-axial joint. During those injections for him, we recreated a lot of the pain that he gets with his migraines and almost started to trigger a little bit more of a migraine for him. And so that was really uh, diagnostic for us because it gave us weight to our hypothesis that the upper cervicals in this patient were contributing to a lot of his symptoms. Now, one of the other cool things that we did for him uh, was we did a nerve hydrodissection of the cervical plexus. So the cervical plexus is a branch of peripheral nerves that comes off of the C1 through C4 nerve roots in the neck that then provide sensory innervation to this entire region right here. So we're gonna have the lesser occipital nerve, which is actually gonna give us some sensation in the back of the head. We have the great auricular nerve, we have the transverse cervical nerve, and then we have the three branches of the supraclavicular nerve, your medial, your intermediate, and your lateral. So we hydrodissected the cervical plexus in two locations. The first location is what we call the intermediate level. This is where we're actually getting deep to the fascia and we are injecting uh, between the muscles where this nerve plexus is gonna lie. And then we also do, uh, do what's called a superficial hydrodissection where we're actually coming outside of the most superficial fascial layer into the subcutaneous tissue bathing the nerves. And, and you'll see this in the videos where we can see hydrodissection of the great auricular nerve outside of the fascial plane uh, or the superficial layer of the fascia and things like that. Now, this procedure is commonly done in regional anesthesia for surgeries that are gonna occur kind of in this region because it does provide adequate analgesia and anesthesia depending on which anesthetics you use and the strength uh, for that region. And so we've adopted that and we've started doing hydrodissections of that those plex of the cervical plexus in those areas. And it has really been absolutely phenomenal at helping our patients who have chronic neck pain, especially when there is this connection between between neck and shoulder pain. Because if we have compression of the cervical plexus as it's going through the fascia layers, because there's so many nerves that are coming through that the fascia at those locations, we can have both lateral neck pain and we can also have shoulder pain. That shoulder pain can go posterior, it can go lateral, it can even come anterior here because of those supraclavicular nerves that are gonna branch out this way and provide sensory innervation all in this area. So we did AAAO, we did the cervical plexus hydrosection, and then we obviously treated the remainder of the facet joints, uh, but only to about the mid facet level because again, he wasn't really having pain in the lower facets, it was more the mid and upper. So we also did C2, 3, C3, C4, and C4, C5 on both sides. Um, so that is uh, how we approach that patient who's been having chronic neck pain, chronic migraines, nothing else has really helped him. He's even on medications and it's still, he's still getting knocked down by these a few times a month. And so we are really excited to see how that healing uh, from the PRP injection 
helps. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Fridays at RP. Please leave a comment below. Let me know uh, what you guys liked, what you want to see more of, if you've been digging the new stuff that we have been adding in, and we'll see you next time.